It's Create Day, my friends. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to be making three trivets and three sets of coasters in this video. Some are for Halloween, but I know not everybody's into that, so there are also some that are just for every day. Let's get started. These are four inch ceramic tiles that I spray painted with rust -Oleum's flat black spray paint. I'm using Folk Arts chalk paint in the color black current for these and I will be doing three coats. Once these were dry I applied a coat of Folk Art Select Seal Matte Sealer. You could also use a clear matte spray paint. I'm doing this step because I'm going to be applying some other things on top of here and I just wanted a good solid base down um, protecting that paint from everything else I'm going to be putting on top of it. I'm starting off with this crackle look stamp from Iron Orchid Designs. It's in the Vintage Textures stamp set. I'm going to use Stays on Ink in the color Plum. This is going to give me kind of a tone on tone look to my coasters. So I just ink up that stamp, get it in place and press down firmly and then do the same thing on the other three tiles. This is a neat little stamp set I got off of Amazon, and if I can find the link for it, I will leave it below in my description box. I'm using Brilliance ink in the color Moonlight White. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink up the stamps that I've chosen out of this. This one is Casket Company. These are all kind of like little labels, and I'm doing these on the diagonal. Um, I just thought it looked better than if I just went horizontally across the uh, coaster. So there it was, the T didn't impress very well down, so I just inked up the T again and then pushed it back down. Here's another cute little stamp set from Amazon. It's Halloween Spiders. I thought this would look really cute to put these in the corners of the coaster. So I'm just using that same white ink and just applying different spider webs, um, just however I saw fit that I thought would look good. And here's how this one is looking so far. I added a little spider up in that corner, but it, he looks kind of blobby. But other than that, I think that one is my favorite. So I'm just going to go uh, ahead and continue using different labels and adding my spider webs and spiders to the rest of my tiles. Now I did want to do this skull originally, but I did not like the way it turned out. So I went ahead and just wiped that off. Since they were sealed, it was really easy to do. And I was able to just start over with a different stamp. I'm using this Gilded Touch Gilding Wax in the color Pearl. To go around the edges, I'm just dipping my finger in it and running it around the edges of the coasters. It's got that same shimmery white as the stamps. 
And to seal these, I'm using automotive enamel. Uh, since they're coasters, I don't think you're going to be dealing with really high heat, so I think this will be effective enough. And I already had it on hand, so that's what I decided to use. And now I just have a sheet of cork board that I'm tracing around, cutting it out inside that line, because I want to, um, no, I don't want it to go all the way to the edges of the coaster. So I'm just going to trim that down until it sits just inside the bottom edge. And then I can apply that with some wood glue. I just have to hold it down for a few minutes while it sets, and then I can flip the coaster right side up and put some weight on it so that it can finish drying. I wipe off any of the excess glue with a baby wipe, and now we can see how these turned out. My next set of coasters are these little wood disc things that I picked up on clearance at Hobby Lobby for like 19 cents a piece. And I don't know what their original purpose was, but I went ahead and spray painted them black. And now I'm going to paint two in each color, two in putty. Well, I was going to use sea glass, but I don't use that. And then two in buttercream. The color I end up using instead of sea glass is called uh, Sage Shadow, and it's a folk art chalk paint color. So I'm going to carefully paint around that top raised portion, um, trying to get it up just to the edge, but not get it over and onto that bottom rim. I don't know what these little um, pieces were supposed to be. They had like a world globe kind of print on the top of them. Um, there's no hole in them to use as for an ornament, so I don't know what they were, but I decided they were going to be coasters. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint um, all of those little round portions on the top of each one in my three different colors. And here's the paint I ended up using, the Sage Shadow from Folk Art. And I think I did two or three coats on each of these. So I'm going to adorn these with some Antiquities stamps from IOD. I picked out six different ones because I have six coasters. And I'm using my Stazon Ink in Jet Black to apply my chosen stamps to the front of each coaster. And here's our dapper looking dog. I absolutely love these stamps. I think they are so cute. Now to add a little bit of age, I'm using that same jet black ink and my sponge applicator to go around the edge of that top portion of the coaster and I do drag it over onto the front of the coaster just a little bit. That really does add to the more vintage look. Now I'm going to seal these with my matte clear sealer before I do the more heavy duty sealer because I don't want any of that ink to um, run and I didn't know for sure if it would or not because I'm finishing these off with my polycrylic since they are coasters. I don't feel like I need the high heat stuff and um, I just wasn't sure if any of that ink might be reactivated. I mean it's permanent ink, it shouldn't, but you know, I just want to play it safe. So all of these are going to get a couple of coats of my polycrylic and then we can put our little felt button pads on the bottom to protect the surface that these might be sitting on. These I got off of Amazon. They are an eighth of an inch thick and I 
believe they were really inexpensive. If I can find the link, uh, it'll be in my description box. And I'm just using Fabri-Tac glue for this. They, they are self-adhesive, but I don't trust self-adhesive. I wanted to make sure that they were stuck on there. So now with all those attached, we are ready to look at how everybody turned out. For my final set of coasters, I'm using these that I've had in my home for a while that we no longer use, and I've decided that I want the back side to now be the front side, so I spray painted them all with a coat of black spray paint as a primer, and now I'm going to do two in Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint Terracotta and two in Fusion's Paint uh, the Color Casement. These will all get... Uh, I. I think I did three coats to get total coverage painting the what is now the top and then the sides. For the back side, I just go in about a half an inch or so with the paint because I'm going to be applying that cork on here, so I don't need to paint the entire bottom. I'm using the IOD Vintage Texture Stamp again. I'm using a different one, that one right there. And for my white coasters, I'm going to use Archival Ink in the color Shadow Gray. I really like how this particular stamp looks with this color on the white. It goes really well with the little rub-on transfers I'm gonna be doing. For the terracotta coasters, I'm using Archival Ink in the color Sepia. This one will be more of a tone-on-tone -tone color scheme. Now for the transfers, I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. I love the, uh, the, the first two there that go on the white coasters. Turned out really well. Um, I was really happy with those. Not so much with the little ones that have the white ghosts because the ghosts are too transparent. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply these with my little tool that comes with rub-on transfers and then burnish that down in there really well. So I think that looks really cute. These ones, they were cute, but uh, I just wasn't digging the transparency of the ghost. And I don't know, I guess you could go in and maybe like paint over that. I just didn't like it enough to go to that much trouble. So now I'm going to take that same ink that I did for the background texture stamp and rub that around the edge of the coasters. And here's where I'm just repeating that I gave them a coat of that matte clear sealer by rust -Oleum before doing the final seal, which for these is the polycrylic again. So I did three coats to make sure these were really well covered. Now it's time to apply that cork backing. So I'm going to add my Gorilla Wood Glue on here. And I had already pre-cut the pieces. I even rounded the edges to match the rounded edges on the little coasters. And you just press it down long enough for it to grab and then you can stack them, let it finish drying, and here's how they turned out.
Now we are on to the trivets. I'm using a transfer from this set by Redesign. This is a much older set. If I can find it on Amazon, I will leave the link below. So I just taped that one in place so that I could get it down there straight and I'm just going to use the little transfer tool to apply this transfer. I totally forgot to mention that I cleaned all of these with liquid sandpaper and then did a coat of my matte clear spray paint to give it a good base for the rest of the project. I'm using a stamp from IOD's Adornment stamp set. I want to do this across the top and the bottom of my transfer. So that's the one I've chosen and I'm using Stays on Ink in Jet Black. Now since this is a trivet, I wanted it to have a high heat sealer on it. The Rust-Oleum engine enamel that I would have normally used just wasn't available to me at the time, so I got this off of Amazon really quick. But there were lots of directions about spraying it on and baking it in the oven at all these crazy high temperatures, and it's like, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to just use it as is, do an experiment, and we'll let you know if it holds up to a hot pan being set on it. I did do a couple of coats on the back side of the coaster or the trivet as well and now I'm applying those same little felt pads on each corner. And here's how that one turned out. My next trivet is going to be a Halloween inspired one. I've got this napkin that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I think they are so cute. You get a pack of uh, 24, I believe. I'm going to just cut out the section that I need and separate that. It's only a two ply napkin. And the top part is what I will be applying. And I'm going to use my polycrylic instead of Mod Podge for this because with it being a trivet, I just didn't really want, I didn't know what how Mod Podge might be affected by heat. So I, I just felt like it was safer to go with the polycrylic. And it, it, you know, it works really well. You just start in one section, lay it down, and then just lift up and proceed on down the rest of that ceramic tile. I use this little silicone like little scraper thing that I have to work out as many of the wrinkles as I can and then I go ahead and apply the top coat of the polycrylic. When that's dry I use my little sanding block in a downward motion to remove the excess paper off the edges. So now I want to stamp the number 31 on there. And this is from IOD's letterpress stamp. I really wanted to do this in a metallic gold, so I grabbed my brushed metal burnished, or what is it, brushed bronze paint um, and my brayer. 
to roll this onto that stamp. But this, the, the metallic paint is super slippery and just doesn't grab well. So it just didn't work out well. I tried, you know, a couple of times and I didn't know if it was the surface I'm stamping it onto because, you know, I think that could make a difference. So I tried twice to get this on here and like the first time it barely showed up the second time it was a little better but it was really smudgy so then I decided to do an experiment and try this on like a paper towel to see if it was the surface I was on you know it just it just wasn't no I guess I tried three times I thought it was only twice boy I'm a diehard so after three times it did not work it did not look good so I went ahead and wiped that off just with the baby wipe and I decided to try this. You can see and it also it took off that napkin in that section too when I wiped that off. So now I'm trying this on the piece of the, the second ply of that napkin because I thought well maybe if it works on this then I can just decoupage that on. But it was still like, see how it's just kind of sloppy looking? So then I thought, well, okay, let's, I don't have any metallic ink, so let's see if something else will work. So I'm trying my jet black ink to see if I like that. And then I also wanted to try that sepia color because it would give a little pop of color that's kind of close to a Halloween color. And so then I tore all of those out. See how this ink looks so much better than the paint? So I went ahead and tore those out and laid them on there to see which one I would like best. And that's the sepia. And then that's the black. And the I don't know if you can tell on camera, but the black just didn't look right. It wasn't the right shade as you know with the rest of the napkin. So I decided on the sepia. Went ahead and heat set it with my heat tool. Because I didn't want that ink to run. Since I'm using polycrylic, it's you know pretty thin, and I was afraid it might reactivate that ink, even though it's permanent ink, and it did a little bit. I did get a little bit of bleeding, even with heat setting it. So I go around the edges first, dry it, and then I apply the final top coat of the polycrylic over that, and then I can just sand off those little edges that are hanging over. Now something I wanted to add with that slippery metallic paint, if you add a gel medium to it, it might thicken it up enough that it would work better. I did that with a stencil one time and it really made a difference, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I didn't think to do it at the time, but that's something that just might have worked for me and I did not think of it. So now I'm going to use some eyeshadow. It's glittery eyeshadow and a stiff brush. To, I'm using the gold color. I, what I'm trying to do is just go around and highlight around the edges of the bottle and the bird and the spider. It's very subtle. And I thought, um, I thought this would be enough, you know, pizzazz for this. So once I got it all on there, I did uh, seal it with a matte uh, spray paint but it just wasn't enough for me. Um, also, then I went in around the edges with the, it's kind of a black color, and I ended up rubbing that all over around the wording and everything to kind of bring it all together. It just didn't look right with the white um, background and then just the edges being that dark because it was really subtle, so I just added it everywhere. But then I decided to go in with my antique gold rub and buff to bring this out a little bit more. There just wasn't enough contrast. Um, I was going to use the rub and buff in the first place, but I thought, no, it'll be too harsh. And it is a little harsh, but in the end, I, I the other, the eyeshadow just wasn't enough. So I went ahead and did this kind of a dry brush technique with the rub and buff around the bottle and the bird and the spider.
I'm going to paint the edges of this with this black metallic paint. I did two coats. I'm finishing off the bottom of this one with uh, Dixie Bell's chalk paint, mineral chalk paint in the color caviar. Some of that black metallic paint had gotten around those edges and I wanted it to look like it was, you know, completely finished and nice and tidy. I did two coats of this and then it was time to seal it so I used the automotive enamel on this one. I want to compare this with the high heat enamel on the other trivets. So I did that and then I added the little felt pads on the bottom and this trivet is finished. So who's ready to watch me screw up another paint inlay that I am able to fix somehow. This inlay will be the one from IOD's Melange set. I am using polycrylic as a base on this ceramic tile. It's already white. I don't need to paint it, so I'm giving it a coat of this and letting that dry. And now I'm going in with the second coat that I will lay my inlay onto. Polycrylic is actually a great substrate for this if, you're, if you don't need to use paint. So it's not the polycrylic's fault. It was definitely, uh, it was all on me. So I get a good healthy coat on there. I missed my inlay, but I, I missed it a little bit too much. So it was super flimsy. It was hard to get it centered well. Um, Cause the last time I did this type of project, I did not miss it. So I didn't have this, this was a new problem for me. And I, I, get it on there the best I can, smooth it out with my hands, and then I use my brayer and a damp paper towel to push that down into that polycrylic. At this point, everything was going well. I don't know why I decided it needed more water misted on there. So I do a couple more squirts and I'm still just pressing down with that damp paper towel. I was, you know, I was just wanting to make sure it got embedded into that polycrylic really well. But then I decided to add more water and that was not good. I went back with my brayer and I noticed that the colors were all starting to bleed out from that inlay. And I was like, oh no, not good. Not good at all. So I was trying to dab it up, dab up the water and it didn't, that did not make a difference. It was happening from underneath. So I ended up just pulling this off. It hadn't really start to embed that much. So I pulled that off and laid it aside. And I was able to clean all that off because it had that, you know, the dried base coat of polycrylic on there. So it got perfectly cleaned off. And I did another coat of the polycrylic to lay the inlay into again. And this time I was much more conservative with the amount of water I put on there. And it ended up, uh, for the most part, it ended up working really well. I keep tamping that down to make sure I have good contact and then I set it aside to dry. Now that it's dry, I mist it with my water and then press down again with my paper towel and gently start pulling this back. It it is 
absolutely good to go until at the very bottom, the lettering wasn't adhered very well, like the first part of that lettering. So I decided to go ahead and apply a little more polycrylic there, press it back down and let that dry, and then go back in when it's dry, re-wet re it with the water, and then finish removing it. So there we go, that turned out much better. I'm gonna let this guy dry and then we can start to do the final seal. The first step is my matte clear sealer, just spritzing it so that the paint doesn't bleed. And then I'm going in with that high heat uh, ceramic coating. I do three coats on the front and two coats on the back, like I did the other uh, trivet. Add those little felt pads on the bottom and then this little trivet is done. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Like I said, I'm going to run tests on all of these trivets to see who can withstand the heat and who cannot. And I will get the results out to you probably in a YouTube post versus a video. I just think it would be best to share the results that I get in case um, somebody is like me and hasn't done this before. So I hope you find my content useful and will consider subscribing to my channel. But most importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.